Welcome to Checkpoint. This is a car show where I get my hands on as many cool cars as I can, tell you what they're about, what they're like to drive, and why they matter. And where better to start than the ultimate entry into car culture, the Mazda Miata. It has just as many fans as it has haters, and the critics loved it. But 27 years after its release, there's only one thing for certain. The Mazda Miata has earned its place in automotive history. The creation and release of the Mazda Miata was something of a perfect storm. Back in 79, the research and development team of Mazda approached then automotive journalist Bob Hall and asked him what kind of cars that Mazda ought to be making. Bob turned to a nearby chalkboard and sketched out his thoughts. It was an open top sports car, the kind of free-spirited, fun car that hasn't been seen since the MG Midgets or the Triumph Spitfires. It was affordable and fun, and the every man and woman could take it home. The Miata development team cycled through a number of choices for engine placement and drivetrain, but lucky for us, they ended up with the classic, engine in the front and rear drive in the back. And so in 1989, the Miata debuted here, the Chicago Auto Show. And while big ticket items like the Dodge Viper concept car and the Acura NSX were stealing the headlines, the Miata success would outshine all of those. So after the Miata debuted at the Chicago Auto Show, it was an instant success. People were clamoring, trying to find out what this car was about. Mazda predicted that it would sell 20,000 units in its first year. It nearly doubled that. In its second year, selling just under 40,000 units. And it didn't just sell well then. It sold so well that they're still making them. Last year, in their fourth generation Miata, Mazda sold their millionth car, and it took a tour around the United States getting signed by fans. It was an affordable, balanced, exciting car. And when you have a car like that, so successful off the bat, you know there's gonna be a dedicated fan base, and there is. You look anywhere online, and there are forums dedicated to these cars. Everything from restoring rusted out shells, keeping the new ones alive, modifying, turboing, supercharging, slamming, lifting. There are monster truck Miatas out there. Anything you wanna do with these cars, you can, and you'll find someone out there who's willing to work on it with you. There's no getting around the fact that the Miata is a slow car. When it first came out, the 1.6 liter four cylinder was putting out 116 horsepower, brand new. And they bumped it up with the 1.8 liter to 132, which is not impressive. Zero to 60 takes over eight seconds in the 1.8 liter version. But what's so fun about driving this slow car is just winding it out and going no faster than the car in front of you. In everyday traffic, you get to feel like a race car driver, putting it to the floor and redlining it. And you're not gonna break any laws. You're not gonna get pulled over. And I know that doesn't sound terribly exciting. Sure, you'd love to drive a car with 700 horsepower that lights up the tires every time you put the gas down. But you never get to push that car to its limits. You never get to feel like you're using it. You feel like it's too much car for you to handle. But this, you can handle this. It is every bit as much of a car as you need, and no more. The Miata is super simple, and that's by design. When you bought a base model, it didn't come with power steering, or power windows, or a radio. You had to pay extra for those features. And Mazda didn't really want you to, because the goal of this car was to stay as lightweight as possible. Even in this 1995 model, I have the bourgeois perks of the steering and the windows, but there's not a lot in here. You get a steering wheel, you get a stick shift, and you get three pedals. Everything else is trimmed down, lightweight. That does mean it's plastic, but you can appreciate why it's there. With such a light car, it feels like you're going faster than you are. 
But I understand, you put your foot down in this car, you're not exactly flying. It was not designed to be a straight line racer. Where this car really comes alive is in the corners. The car is balanced. The 50-50 weight distribution, front and back, allows for really precise neutral steering. The body roll is there, but it's predictable, it's manageable. You can feed it into a corner at relatively high speeds, and it being a lightweight car, it just sticks to the ground. It's a confidence-inspiring car. You feel like you can chuck it into any corner and just land it every time. I'm connecting corners that I don't think I'd be able to do in a bigger, heavier, more intimidating car. And the tires let me know far before I've reached any sort of limit. It's easy to handle, it's for beginners to jump in and learn, and it's for experts to really test the limits of this car. Oh, I've never gotten a chance to actually take that road as fast as I want. I always catch a car, and there's a cop. Officer. Oh, that was exciting. This car is great, but it is not perfect. The car is light because it's small. If you plan on daily driving this car, and you can, you'd better pack light. There's not a lot of room in the trunk, and there's even less room up front. And just like any coupe, there are only two seats, so if you have more than one friend, you may run into problems. The looks for this Miata get a lot of hate. The first generation has the big pop-up headlights and the soft curves that are reminiscent of the Sportsters of the 50s, but in today's sports car world, they look soft and not very aggressive, and so this car gets called a chick car or worse. But I think that's a mischaracterization. Sure, you can get an aggressive sports car, and that look has worked for lots of them, but this never set out to be one of those cars, both in looks and in spirit. It's a slow car that wants you to really test what it can do. It's a, it's a puppy dog. You look at its eyes and it's ready to go. It's happy. It's not supposed to be this hardcore man's car in the old sense of the word. I think it gets a lot of unnecessary flack. It's a good looking car. It's got classic lines. But perhaps the biggest fault in this Miata is just the passing of time. These cars are coming up on the 25 year mark and they are officially classic cars. And they're not garage queens, these things get driven. So any Miata that you're gonna pick up today is gonna have some degree of 20 years of driving wear. This particular model, the brakes squeak, the seals leak when it rains, and rolling up this window, it takes a while. You can measure numbers for a car. You can look at zero to 60 times and corner entry speeds and G-force and all of that. But none of that really matters. What matters most is how do you feel when you're driving the car? And that is where the Miata shines. It's got a big goofy face. It's got a drop top that lets the whole world into the car with you. It's got a snappy gearbox with an enthusiastic engine up front that wants you to go hard all day long. And you can, and it will last. These cars go well into the 200,000 mile mark for their longevity, and it's a dependable, fun car. And the best part about it is they are so affordable. I bought this car for $2,500. That's insane. I've gotten more compliments on this than I bet anybody who spent $2,500 in their life. So where does that leave us? Is this still the king of open top roadsters or are we just looking at an aging star past its prime? To me, the answer is clear. A car should be judged on its spirit and how it makes you feel when you're driving it. And this car is unparalleled. Oh yeah. It's just a total blast. This Audi's trying to keep up with me. He's trying to keep up and he can't. That's gotta be 15 years newer than this car and he is struggling to stay on my tail. 
This thing is a bargain, it's reliable, and it's gonna outdrive any car that you can name. <laughs> if you're looking for an entry point into cars, or you've had a million cars and you're looking for one to add to the collection, get in a Miata, drive it, and tell me you didn't have the best time of your life. The word Miata comes from an old high German word meaning reward. And I don't think there could be a better name for this car. If you learn this car, if you learn its quirks and its ins and its outs, and you really drive this thing, you will be rewarded.